Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about Mystery Science Theater 3000, episode 1309, The Million Eyes of Sumeru. And this is the 227th episode of Mystery Science Theater, and this is an interesting one because it's a movie that's getting re rift i guess uh it was in the ktma era which i think they were re, re, re rift other ones uh from it was called i guess the 18th episode of ktma and then it was also rift by rift tracks in 2019 and now this was also interesting is i believe based on those episodes the people in the theater are never the same you either have joel would be joel trace and J. Elvis Weinstein, then Rift Tracks is Kevin Murphy, Bill Corbin, and Mike Nelson, and then now you have Jonah Hampton and Barron. Yeah, that wouldn't have any overlap. Although, Joel did, I believe, write on this episode. Although, I wonder when it has writers, does that kind of random mystery science theater question, when they say writers, they never say, like, who just wrote for the movie, who wrote the skits, things like that. It's never specified. So, maybe, maybe Joel didn't write on this one for riffs, but I think he did. So, Joel is the only one, I guess, who's written riffs for this movie twice. Um, but a long gap, so I don't know if he, <laughs> I don't know if he remembers this one before. Uh, I didn't watch the premiere, I just watched the episode. But I really like this one. I think Jonah and the bots are really on a good roll at this point. They have really great charisma. They're really funny together. This one actually came out the same year as the last episode with the last movie they did, The Batwoman, from 1967. This one has Frankie Avalon, and I think... I guess there wasn't really wrestling, but you, you kind of got that they were both bad movies from 1967. So that's interesting, um, but uh, very different, uh, very different movies. I liked the the kind of ridiculousness of this movie. Uh, they had fun with Frankie Avalon. I know riffs really stuck out for me, but I, I really liked the vibe of it. The host segments, I liked that they did one where he's trying to convince them there's an ion storm. It was like separate. They did two skits in this that were separate from the movie. That's something that sort of bugged me about the last one, The Batwoman. And I sort of, I think I like it more when they have skits that have nothing to do with the movie. I do think they have to have some, not ridiculous or something. Um, but two of them, one was the Iron Storm thing, and then whatever's going on, and I guess this is a spoiler, but with Joel, Emily, and Jonah in that moment was interesting. It, they're clearly building to something, and I like kind of where it's building. It's interesting. I think by the time you're on your third season as a cast for Mystery Science Theater or a host, um, you, you really get some like really well-refined kind of stuff, and, and you see that even with, like I think, one of my favorite seasons of Mike's is season seven. I think season three, well, I guess that would be his fourth, but uh, Joel season three and four, two of my favorites. So I really like with Jonah and he works better with like the kitschiness of the sixties. I feel more than I thought Emily and that crew did with their one. I know they're separate movies, so that's not a fair comparison at all. Um, also, this movie is just kind of ridiculous, but it's also pretty watchable. That That's the kind of thing about it, you know? Um, so many, like, bad spy things in the 60s, which is, I guess we are in a post-James Bond era at the time, but they, they do have fun with that in the spy talk thing in that one. Um, the, the, you know, I think this was a fairly solid episode. I don't know if it sticks out necessarily. I think, man, this season really hit hard with Munchie and Dr. Mordred and things like that early, and now I feel like we're just in the kind of, okay, here's another one kind of thing. But it was a good, solid episode i think uh right now i'm curious to see where it goes this season goes from here um i guess i feel that way with most jonah seasons it's like you get mac and me early in the season you get cry wilderness early in the season he, he usually peaks better in the beginning of the season so maybe that's why but i think this is a solid one like if you were gonna put this on and be like oh cool like i like this episode you know but it's not one of the standout ones even for his run or anything like that you know it, it shows how solid that cast can be because just an average episode is still highly enjoyable um and and i found that and i thought they work perfectly especially with the 60s stuff they they're i think very good at doing like any kind of bad movie i think it's because they've gone through so many episodes they're so well trained and you can really tell throughout this one um so i'm i'm curious where the show's going where the season's going and i'm happy with uh where jonah is where he is as a performer and a host and where he is with the show i think is uh is a really cool place to be right now so um yeah i'm i'm still liking the season i just think you know 
we we maybe flew too high at the beginning now we're kind of you're flying it in coasting a little but but sometimes with tv shows like a, a, a really good coasting episode is kind of highlights like how good that show or that season is and i think that maybe that speaks highly of that i don't know or maybe i'm giving them too much credit whichever but i still quite quite like this episode so if you've seen mystery science theater 3000 episode 1309 the million eyes of sumeru and you would like to talk about it then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to oh. Oh.